Hello everyone. So, we will continue with the fiber length measurement techniques. So, we have seen the difference between shorter diagram and fibrogram of say polyester staple fiber of equal length and also we have seen the superimposition of fibrogram of cotton the fibrogram and the shorter diagram. Let us see once again. So, this is the fibrogram where x axis shows the length and y axis it is a proportion of fiber. This is the fibrogram and in shorter diagram the x axis will be the proportion of fiber and y axis will be the length of fiber which is shown in the red color okay. and this is the length of fiber and here x axis will be proportion of fiber and this is the typical form of shorter diagram. And now, if we superimpose this is for the same fiber, okay, same fiber and if we now superimpose this two, we will get typically this will be the fiber diagram superimposition of both. Okay. Now, what is it is showing here? It is a this is the proportion and the maximum length of both the fibers are almost same this is the maximum length point okay. and here it is approximately it is a 100 percent fibers are there, but the this difference this is the difference because it is ideally it appears if it is if we uh, assume that the fibers are arranged in same order in case of fibrogram also because in uh, in uh, shorter diagram the exact fiber lengths are taken this is the longest fiber and this way in horizontal way it's arranged fibers are arranged in horizontal way as we have discussed so from longest fiber to shortest fiber this is the way it is arranged but if we see if we see, assume that it's a that it goes in the same way as in the fibrogram, but we see it is entirely different okay. the, and this is due to the assumptions. We have two assumptions one is that and due to this is due to the clamping. Now, in the clamp ideally if we see in the clamp if we see that the just let us see here as we have discussed earlier that in the clamp the fibers are arranged in random fashion like this in this way. These are the fibers this the way fibers are clamped okay, at, at any point okay, and randomly and majorly it is uh, the longer fiber will be selected. This is these are the two assumptions, but ideally suppose if we see in fibrogram somehow if we clamp the fiber so at the end point ideally we are clamping the fiber at the end point always and all the fibers all the fibers are clamped if we can clamp in that way all the fibers are clamped irrespective and this is uh, there is no length biasness. If we prepare in this way and if we get the spectrogram by scanning in that case what we will do we will get here this is the ideal fiber no length biasness no length biasness and also the fibers are clamped 
at the end point there is no loop formation. In that case we will get the fibrogram. So, this is the proportion and here is the length we will get a fibrogram like this exactly same as the shorter diagram, but we get the fibrogram in this fashion this is mainly due to the two assumptions one is the length due to length biasness another is due to the folding of the fibers. So, this the difference here it is due to the two assumptions ok. Otherwise ideally it should match. So, as we have discussed earlier the typical fiber length that is fibrogram this is the fibrogram and here for cut staple fiber this one is the cut staple fibers uh, fibrogram analysis as we have already discussed the fiber from fibrogram we can get the uniformity index and uniformity ratio ok. Analysis we are not uh, discussing again and we can now do some calculation very simple calculation. The problem is that here the 2.5 percent and 50 percent span lengths are given 2.5 percent span length is 1.09 inch and 50 percent span length is 0 0.41 inch in value wise 50 percent span length is always lower than 2.5 percent span length calculate the value of uniformity ratio. So, what is the uniformity ratio it is simple the ratio of the 50 percent span length and 2.5 percent span length. So, you just we can use these two values and get the value. this is the 37.6 percent value. So, if it is said that this is the dead result. So, if we if someone asks the what what will be the your actually your conclusion about the quality of fiber. So, quality of uniformity. So, as it is 37.6 percent. So, we can simply say it is a poor quality. So, it is less than 40 percent it is a poor quality. Next problem is that same problem similar if the fiber actually 50 percent span length is 13.5 millimeter. So, 50 percent span length of cotton is 13.5 millimeter and uniformity ratio is given it is 45 percent what will be the 2.5 percent span length in millimeter. So, it is a again simple formula. So, we know the uniformity ratio this is the equation. So, from there we can calculate the 2.5 percent span length. So, 2.5 percent span length is 30 millimeter. So, in this way we can if we know few data we can calculate 30 millimeter is the answer. Now, can we calculate the uniformity ratio of cut polyester fiber, cut staple fiber. So, if immediately if it is asked that what is the uniformity of any cut fiber, immediately it, it will come to our actually mind that ok it is a cut polyester fiber cut fiber that means uniformity should be 100 percent. So, uniformity ratio should be 100 percent because it is a cut fiber there is no variation, but if we see the in the fibrogram as we have discussed earlier it is not the rectangular form it is a triangular form. So, this is the ideal poly cut polyester cut staple fibers diagram it is not always triangular, but it is very close to triangle. So, we can for all practical purpose we can assume it to be a triangular in nature. So, in it is in triangle form 
okay, then this triangle we can analyze. So, what is 50 percent span length? 50 percent span length is from 50 percent point from C to this point okay, and 2.5 percent span length is this one. Okay. Now, here if we see we can consider this as a triangle A O B. AOB is a triangle and uniformity ratio, what is the uniformity ratio? It is the ratio of this D and this side and C this side, okay. this is the uniformity ratio. So, this is uh, this at 50 percent span length this one and, and this direction this uh, length 2.5 percent this ratio is the uniformity ratio. Now, this is the ratio. Now, if we consider this as a triangle, so this will be a similar triangle because their angles are same. Now, for any similar triangle, uniformity ratio will be 50 percent span length by 2.5 percent span length. So, 50 percent this uh, 50 percent span length by 50 percent span length by 2.5 percent span length, if we consider the triangles A O C A D this point and A C this point these three triangles if we consider. So, the 50 percent span length by 2.5 percent will be A C by A D this divided by this equal to A C by A D. So, that will be the, the uh, ratio of the side for any similar triangle the ratio of the side will be equal to equal. Okay. So, this side by this side will be A C by A D. Now, what is A C? What is A C? A C is the 50 percent of A O that means 0.5 A O and what is A D? A D is 97.5 multiplied by A O. So, 50 by 97.5. So, 0.5 multiplied by A O divided by 0 0.975 multiplied by A O. So, if we see take the ratio it is coming out to be 0 0.5128 and that is the uniformity ratio of cut fiber any cut fiber. So, that we can see that for cotton the maximum uniformity ratio we can reach up to say 50 percent and for polyester cut polyester of equal length we can maximum theoretically we can reach up to 0 0.5128 it we, we cannot go beyond that okay this is the value we are getting and if we want to know the uniformity index what is that uniformity index uniformity index is the ratio of the mean length by upper quartile length. Now, let us try to see uniformity ratio is in percentage it is a 51.28 percent this 0.5128 is 51.28 percent. Now, uniformity index we know this is the way we can calculate uniformity index it is a mean fiber length by upper half mean length for polyester cut polyester. So, uniformity index will be it is a the this length the it will be always same for that uniformity mean length and upper half mean length will be exactly same because if we take the tangent from two points it will go meet at the same point. So, uniformity index for cut polyester fiber is the mean length equal to upper half mean length. So, this will be 1 okay, and it is 100 percent in terms of percent. So, for polyester fiber the mean length uh, sorry uniformity index is 100 percent and uniformity ratio is 51 point something 51 point it is a theoretical uniformity index. Okay. But if we test 
if we test the fiber in fibrograph, the we will not get exactly the 51.28 percent. It will get little bit variation, but it will be definitely close to that and also we will not get the uniformity index as 100 percent, it will be it will vary because it is a matter of probability. It is it will not come exactly triangular, it will be little bit difference, little bit variation will be there. Once we get little variation, we will get some value. Now, we will discuss the methods of measurement of fiber length of wool fiber. In wool fiber, there are it is totally different from cotton. We cannot test wool fiber the way we test cotton. We cannot test wool fiber in fibrogram. Fibrogram we cannot use because of the reason that wool fiber it is a length, wool fiber length of wool fiber is much longer than cotton fiber. So, the way we test cotton fiber length it is it will not be applicable for wool fiber. So, wool fiber length is uh, measured in two different way one is where a fiber diagram machine and it works in capacity principle okay. and length is measured here after the removal of grease content. Okay. So, it is a measured for combed wool fiber. Wool fiber is when we receive we have to thoroughly remove all the grease fiber, but because otherwise we cannot take out the fiber it is very sticky. So, after scouring wool even in that case also it is very difficult to measure because it is a crimp condition, it is entangled condition we cannot take out the fiber. So, we can we normally test the wool fiber length after just after the combing. So, the combed wool fiber is taken also one can try with the carded fiber also, but for combed fiber the fibers are parallel in nature. So, this is the and this one is a the draw it is called one draw means the this is a polythene plastic sheet plastic sheet and it is a marked at it there is a hole is there. Okay. This is to be fitted on the machine there is a projection this projection in the machine and this slot this hole is will be fitted to the machine. So, that we can it can the instrument uh, that can be started and this will show the when it is uh, fitted on the projection this will show the starting point of measurement. And there is a measuring slot which measure the capacitance of the material. Okay. Now, as the material is uh, change it is proportional to the quantity of material here. Okay. Uh, this is the uh, draw for Uira fiber diagram machine, this is called one draw. So, the draw is actually obtained from the combed sliver and at the end of the this plastic sheet it is a transparent normally it is a sheet there is a it is a gum is this is a there is a sticky gum and the fibers are actually gripped. So, this is suppose this is the combed sliver. So, there is the and this one is a draw okay, polythene uh, plastic draw and at the end it is gripped the, at the point then and we are taking. This is the draw one draw which contains short fiber, long fiber and all that. Now, this draw is placed in the machine. Okay. This draw is placed in the machine where it is actually and it starts from this point. Okay. Now, let us let me draw once again this is suppose sliver sliver 
so combed sliver okay now the polythene plastic sheet that is draw it's like this here it's a slot is there at the end at the end point we have one that is a gum sticking gum it's a it's it's divided into two parts okay the top part and bottom part it's a doubled okay at the end there is a it's just little bit opening now this is placed here at the tip point fibers are gripped okay and then it has been pulled so after pulling what we are getting it is grip now the fibers are gripped few fibers are gripped now this is draw okay one draw now you have a measuring slot here which measures the capacitance of the means and it's it's manual it's not automatic the manually this is this position is fixed at the starting point the maximum number of fibers are there so capacitance will be different now gradually it is drawn so this is with the slot this is that it will it is moved so next time it will be here and it is done in 10 different stage steps okay now so gradually it is moved now try to see parallel fibers have one end sealed between the strips of plastic so one end is sealed and ideally it is assumed it's almost same length okay measurement carried out by pulling the fiber draw fibers draw fiber draw this is called one draw okay through the measuring slot this is measuring slot machine measures the capacitance as the draw passes through the slot so gradually the draw is passing through the slot and machine measures the capacitance and the capacitance is proportional to the amount of material so initially capacitance will be high then gradually the material will be less and less depending on the length okay and this is the way it is measured the mean length so so first draw is this one it's a maximum okay this is 100% 100% that is 100% fibers are there this is the first one this is maximum length this is say 100% cumulative classes or class of frequency that is maximum capacitance so this 100% we discard we don't take for calculation we gradually the, we are, there is a data that is a uh, value 100% value is there some um, capacitance value it's giving and we know the length okay that length is a zero length now gradually we move we move the draw we draw the that uh, sheet till the 95 percent of the capacitance value 95 percent of that initial value is reached y axis is showing the movement of the draw x axis is showing the proportion of so at 95 percent we have noted down the length okay so it is actually it's moved manually and till it's 95 percent of the initial value is reached that value that in the curve in the graph sheet we are plotting point putting that point it's called 95 point next value will be again 10 percent that is 85 percent so 95 percent point is this one then we move further it will become 85 percent of the fibers then 75 65 55 45 
35, 25, 15, 5, now this is 100 percent, in this way up to 5 percent. There will be 10 readings starting from 95 to 5. So, it goes in opposite way, it starts with 95, then with that interval of 10 percent, it goes up to 5 percent. So, this way we get an cumulative frequency diagram of wool fiber length, this is the cumulative frequency diagram, indirectly we measure the capacitance. And in uh, fibrogram we have seen, we measure by intensity of light okay. and capacitance as it is proportional to the mass of material. So, it, me it measures the weighted value. Okay. Now, try to see it is being drawn through the slot. Now, 95, 85, 75, 65, 55 and 5. So, this is uh, drawn, the mean length is calculated in the way as has been explained. So, this is the way we get plot that is cumulative frequency diagram. Although it appears it is a same as the that of fibrogram, but it is a different because this is giving almost clear idea, it is equivalent to the shorter diagram. Here it is equivalent to shorter diagram, but fibrogram is different only as we have explained, it is due to the way of selecting the clamp, okay, preparing the clamp. So, this gives, this is typically it is a shorter diagram okay, and it is a the length addition of length divided by 10, it is a we get the mean length. And another version is there, it is a basically automatic version of with a fiber diagram machine is that it is a it is called almeter, where the principles are exactly same, but there are little bit variation. In OERA fiber diagram machine, the draw is prepared by hand and it is drawn by it is drawn manually okay. and you have to plot manually, but advantage of OERA is it is a it gives the clear idea of actual length of the fiber why we can't we use the similar technique in case of cotton because cotton fibers length is very small and variability is very high that's why if we want to prepare draw it will be very very difficult we have to take large quantity of fiber but in that case it will it won't work because of the variability to take care of the smaller fiber also we, we have to have uh, the thicker material and it will not work, but for wool it is a long fiber uh, variability is relatively smaller. So, we can have few fibers and then we can prepare the draw and it is automatic version of with a fiber diagram machine with little bit modification. What is the modification? Modification is basically the preparation of the draw. Here we do not prepare draw, we prepare sample which is known as the fibro liner. By using the fibro liner sample is prepared automatically okay. and this machine is known as fibro liner 
Now, this is the fibrolyme run. Now, try to see here it is a bottom comb okay? and fibers the in the form of sliver are placed on the bottom comb. It is a it is a type comb means the different types of it is a gill box type, it is a gill type. Okay? If you see here this is the bottom combs. Now, the slivers are placed here of different length. Okay. Okay. Now, there are few projected fibers. Now, what fibro line and the clamps are doing? It is gripping the fibers from this point. Okay. Now, I can show here. Now, try to see here. So, this is the fibers, okay. these are the fibers, the, the bottom comb is like this okay. and here it is the line, fibro liner, the grip what it is doing? It is clamping repeatedly, it is clamping and it is placing the fiber on the top comb, again clamping gripping and again placing the every all it is it for a particular setting it is repeating say several time till all the fibers projected from the last comb is gripped it is taken away and placed here. Now, the difference between top comb arrangement and bottom comb arrangement is that the here the fibers are arranged at random like sliver fibers can start at any point, but as the grip is gripping the fiber taking the fiber with a very very small length eh, it is may be few millimeter 1 millimeter or 2 millimeters distance whatever projected fibers are there it is gripping the fiber and it is placing that means, whatever fibers are it is placing in the top comb, it is exactly at its end is at the point at a point. Now, as soon as the all the fibers at the bottom comb it is exhausted here, then this comb will fall down projecting the remaining fibers here other fibers. The same thing will repeat and it will be it, again it will in gradually it will uh, move take uh, the fiber and it is there it will take the fiber it will place there. So, fiber it is one then it is uh, gripping the this is this is the fiber it is gripped fiber and it is placed here. So, in this way it will continue placing until a thick material is actually prepared this material this is the top comb you know again I am coming. So, this is the bottom comb comb and now it is placing the fibers in the top comb again similar top comb. Now, the fibers are gripped here and it is placed. So, in this way it will place the fiber all the fibers of the exactly same edge. Okay. Here starting point will be same. After a bulk of fibers are placed here then this will be transferred to in between to polythene sheet. This total fibers will be transferred here in between two say this is the polythene sheet one, this is the top sheet top sheet and this is the bottom sheet transparent very thin polythene sheet this will be 
fibers will be transferred here having the edge perfect edge at one end and this is this other and the fibers will be suppose we have prepared this is at the this is exact edge at the end okay exact end and then it will be placed in between the same polythene sheet it is placed here. So, after that so what is there at the the edge the even edge is at the midpoint at the in inner side though and this is the longest fiber. So, this polythene sheet okay, and the top and bottom along with the fiber will be placed inside the machine it will be scanned and then we will get the this is the scanning. We can see the picture from the picture here this is this fiber draw which is trapped between two polythene film plastic films which is transparent we can see the fiber this is the total draw during measurement the samples sample is moved trapped between two plastic films at a constant speed with the longest fiber this is the longest fiber at the tip longest fiber penetrates inside the capacitance zone fast. So, the longest fiber enters the capacitor fast. So, in this way it is it will measure the capacitance of the total system it is uh, total fibers as it is moving and it will be exactly the same way as we have done in case of the OERA fiber diagram, but it is in the opposite direction. In OERA it starts from the maximum capacitance zone to minimum zone, but here it is a minimum to maximum, okay. but the, the principle is capacitance principle, but another thing is that here age is exactly same at the end point we, uh, we, uh, uh, we uh, grip the fiber and end point it is uh, aligned the change in capacitance caused by the amount of fiber. So, the length is actually measured gradually. So, we get the all the length related data. So, this is actually nowadays in uh, industry they are using because we are fiber diagram machine is little bit it is a slower it takes its time consuming and this is very fast. Okay. And I think that now we have uh, completed the fiber length measurement techniques we have seen the uh, fiber length techniques for different methods for cotton and there are two special methods for wool fiber. In the next segment we will discuss the fiber fineness measurement till then thank you.